every knee shall bow before you, and every tongue will
Hallelujah. How many of you worship him? How many of you know he's Lord of all? He's Lord of all. And we thank him. Thank you, team. Well, we welcome you to Dove Church. Thank God for you. We invite you to join us in worship today and in ministry of the word and receive it. And so we're going to do like we normally do. We start out by making our confession. You ready for the word? Yes. Amen. Amen. Let me take, take my mask off. Amen. Everybody with your Bibles extended, or wherever your word is. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for the entrance of your word brings life and light to all that receive it. Now, God, we bless every person under the sound of our voice that will say something that challenges us to be transformed and our minds to be renewed. And we thank you for the victory we have through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Holy Spirit, take us to where we need to be. Help us to speak forth God's mind today. Now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Financing the Kingdom, Lesson 2. Financing the Kingdom, Lesson 2. I'm going to start by by asking a few questions, just two, asking two questions in this second lesson of financing the kingdom. If you want lesson one, you can write us at Dove Church 4660 Military at Horatio, Detroit, Michigan, 48210. And we will send you out a copy of lesson number one. As we had some technical difficulties last week, and we want to make sure that you stay consistent and stay with us. And uh, But back to our, our lesson. Number one question is, can we believe God's word? Can we believe God's word? And the second question, the follow-up question to that is, can we trust God's word? Can we trust God's word? It's not just enough to hear it or to receive it as preached, but there's something that you have to do with the word. You've got to internalize it, and that internalization carries it to an action. So the word is really beneficial to you when it turns into an action. And so to be in the word, you've got to engage with it. 
And many times we have situational engagements in the Word. When we get in trouble, we want somebody worded to come and help us. Or we want somebody that knows the Word to pray for us. When, when every believer has the chance to, 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 to get powered up through the Word them own self. So can you believe it and can you trust the word of God? If the answer is yes to these questions, you must also believe the promises made in God's word. Amen? You must believe the promises. If he promises it to you, do you believe and trust that he can bring it to pass? See, that's a part of what you can look forward to is that God is going to keep his word and that he he, is not a man that he would lie, nor the son of man that he would repent. Meaning that that, that if he says it, it's going to come to pass because God said it. Amen? How many of you believe the promises of God? How many of you are living the promises of God? Amen, amen, amen. Uh, uh, one of the promises we live every day of God is, 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 is if we confess and believe on his son that we'll have everlasting life, we can be saved. We are living as saved people in response to a promise that God made and activated in us, and we are the recipients of that promise. We are saved. Amen? Now, here, here comes a beginning promise, and it is a first mentioned promise. When I say first mentioned, there are some things in Scripture that are first mentioned, and they set precedent for everything that's coming afterward. So they are a first mention. So here comes a first mentioned promise. It's in Genesis 8.22. Genesis 8.22. And, and it gives us this, this promise. It gives us this promise. And you can stand on this because it is, is, it's going to happen Is going to keep happening because this is a cyclic uh, promise. That means it has a cycle to it. Uh, It says, while the earth remains, everybody say remains. Sea time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Shall not cease. This is wintertime in Detroit, Michigan. Is it cold? How many of you have been in Michigan all of your life? Does it always get cold this time of year? That's a promise. Now, every now and then we get a a, a warm front that comes through and fools us. But how many of you know that's not going to last? Because we're in, in, the, in the winter. Amen. Sea time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. That's a promise. That means God said this. He set it in motion. And these four cycles are going to happen over and over again. They are really seasonal cycles but they are cycles of giving and cycles of giving with harvest seed represents the gift you give seed is something that has the potential to explode seed has more of more seed in it than what you plant say amen In the seed is the potential for multiplication. But you will never see it if you hold the seed. The seed must be scattered. Scattered means planted. And you even have to Be careful of where you plant your seed. It must go into good ground. Because if you got good seed in bad ground, you won't get a harvest. Bad ground. And farmers know that in the ground there should be a good pH balance. The right environment 
that causes the seed to break down, but causes it to the germ of the seed to come forth and replicate itself because it's able to feed because the environment around it does not kill it. Seed has to go in good ground to produce harvest. Now, Proverbs eleven twenty four. 24, I gave you this last time. There is one who scatters, yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right. But it leads to poverty. When it says he withholds more than is right, that statement is also said, God is not expecting for you to give everything away. Somebody ought to put a smile on their face. Because you could have left from here last week thinking, I need to give it all away. No. In your economy of your home, you should save a percentage. You should have household finances. There's a giving component. And then there is some, some easy money, the, the, the fun stuff. There should be some kind of formula that way that you operate with. But there is one component that agitates everything else. It's the giving component. And you give so you can live. He gives seeds to souls. What is right in this scripture, we explain, is what God asked for and what he asked you to give. Some of you have a problem with what he asked for. Much less if he tells you do something above that. God is good. For making you choke up. Because sometimes what he asks for is uncomfortable to you. But the uncomfort, if you could bear out, will generate a harvest. That made the, the discomfort worth it. Well. That was just the introduction. In our first lesson, we gave the first three points of emphasis called the essence of giving. And I'm just going to review them, just, just label them out right quick. Number one, when we give, the Lord takes it personally. We are handing it to him. If we give to the poor, we lend to the Lord. We lend to the Lord. And, and he's going to repay. Number two. We give because we have received so freely. Never mind that song that said, I work hard for the money. What did God give you so you could make the money? And he gave it freely. Number three, we give because the Lord makes it a condition for his giving us further blessings. It's a condition to unlock the doors that God has for you for further blessings. So give. Our lesson today will focus on some more essences of giving. So technically, this is number four, or if you're not going by numbers, the next point. We give to increase our love for the things of God. Number four. We, we give to increase our love for the things of God. 
Matthew 6, 21. Turn there or look at one of the monitors. Matthew 6, 21. It says there, this one statement says a lot. It is, it is foundational to giving. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. What you are into is what you finance. Even if you're not a good giver, if you like good food, you will pay good money for it. You'll go to a good restaurant and spend 40 or $50 for a meal because that's where your heart is at. Wow. That little insightful scripture is profound. Now, personally, I would have thought it was the other way around. Wherever your heart is, you will put your treasure. But our Lord said, Wherever you put your treasure first is where your heart is. That is that's incentive of plenty for pastors to keep urging their people to be givers in all of life, not just the offering plate. Whatever you are into, that's your heart, and that's what you will finance. If you like weed, hallelujah. You will finance it. You finance what you're, what's in your heart. If you like Johnny Walker Red. Oh, that's that's old folk stuff. What is some new ones? Uh uh. Uh-huh. 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 Mm hmm I got some answers from the audience. Uh, somebody said Tennessee. I mean Hennessy. Then somebody else said Patron. Is, is, is Ciroc in that category too? All right, all right. Just to let you know that I go to the store from time to time. I see what's on the counter. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Jesus. I was in line the other day and somebody was financing their heart. He said, just give me three cigarettes. What, what do y'all call that when you don't buy the whole pack? <laughs> what is that, a Lucy? L-U-C-Y or, or L-O-O-S-E-Y, Lucy. <laughs> As in loose cigarettes? Yeah, okay, I got it, I'm good. I might as well loosen up. We're going to have some fun today, okay? In 2011, Miss Maria Asante, at the age of 90, found a stray kitten. She named the cat Tommaso. It was an Italian cat. Miss Asante died at the age of 94. She willed her fortune of $13 million, property in Rome, Milan, and, 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 and Calabria, to her four-year-old cat. Her treasure was where her heart was.
in the will was the salary for her caretakers and her doctor, the cat's doctor. You will finance what your heart is after. Well, let's go back to Matthew 6, 21, where it says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What is Jesus really saying? You can only have your treasure and your heart in one place. Your treasure not over here and your heart over there. Your treasure and your heart are in one place. Is everybody listening to me? Yes. It's in one place. Number five. We give to increase our reward in heaven. Giving has eternity in it. You got to get this today. Giving has eternity in it. Wow. So let me say it again because you're going to hear something. We give to increase our reward in heaven. It is a selfish statement. But it is one of the allowable, selfish thing that God gives us the benefit of. It's kingdom building selfishness that you benefit from eternally. This is not for every situation, but for the narrow confines of this one for soul winning. Matthew 10:42. The Passion Translation. And it says this. And whoever gives a cup of cold water to one of my humble disciples, I promise you he will not go unrewarded. Just in case you get sideways about Blessing your man and woman of God. The Bible says, you, if you just even bring me some water. Emily, Emily gave me some water today. She has a reward for giving me some water. And she's going to get extra money because it was a lemon in the water. She thought about me extra good. I want this water to taste good. Thank you. I'm not going to give Emily the reward. The Lord is going to give it to her because she simply gave me. Come on, you better get with this. So if she did it selfishly, if, if say for an instance, she said, huh, Pastor getting some water today because I'm going to get rewarded. She was good with that. That's fine too. I, do it selfishly. Do it selfishly. Do it selfishly. Get your reward. Get your reward. Okay, done. Get your reward. You want Pastor to have that? Yeah, thank you. Get, get your reward. You, you, you want me to have that? You held it too long. Get, is that for me? Get, get, get your, Does that make sense? And we hold back because, see, the rewarder is greater than the one you gave the water to. Come on, come on. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? See, see, you can't look to me, Pastor. I gave you some water. Where my feed you? Where mine? No, you're doing it wrong. The Lord promised a reward. So eternity was in that one small transfer. Eternity is in it. My God. Is that clear? He said you will not go unrewarded. What 
could be a smaller gift in a cup of water. So when I give to support a worker in the kingdom, even if it's only a cup of water, I share in the reward of God. The reward God will give me for, 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 for buying into the work. Now, he's not limiting you to a cup of water only. Don't get crazy. It's more than about a cup of water, but Jesus used a meager example to say this small thing will bring a reward. If, see, he's trying to get you into the mindset of being rewarded for sponsoring somebody doing the work of ministry so somebody can get into the kingdom. Let me carry it a little further than that. See, what you're doing is not only helping hydrate the servant of God, but your help facilitating the ministry of the Lord in the earth. And what is the fruit of that ministry? Souls. My God. One thing leads to another. You're helping something else. Whenever you all give me an offering, I said, God bless them. I have to put my word on what he already says. So we come into total agreement that you'll get blessed for your giving. And then I thank God. Thank God they're helping me to live long. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's an independent thing, so you don't have to worry what, about what anybody else is doing. Or you're always letting somebody else do it, and you're riding that coattail. they giving them something that's for all of us. But you're never in it. It's not for you. Matthew 6 and 20. Matthew 6 and 20. It says, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. It chases Matthew 10, 42, although Matthew 10, 42 comes later. It's saying, when you give, you lay up treasures in heaven. You have a reward in heaven. But but not only do you lay up treasure in heaven, God is so good till in the earth he has given you something because you have an open door and you reside under an open heaven. What God has done is given you a foretaste of glory divine. How did he do that? Give you a blessing that make you so happy, you say, what could be waiting for me over there? This is bad, but oh God, what's over there that I can look forward to for not one day, but eternity? Your giving has heaven in it. And I hate to think what the converse is if you don't give. We can't take it with us. When, when my grandbaby twins showed up, they were as naked as a jaybird. However naked a jaybird can be. They were that. They didn't have a thing until somebody put it on them. And amazingly, when you go out, you may be dressed to the nine, but you are carrying none of it with you.
that suit or that dress or that whatever they bury you in, it will still be in the ground decaying with you. But spiritually, something goes forward from you. You can't take the money with you, but the reward has gone on before you. Come on. Come on. You better live so something can, can go on before you. Are you out there? Does that make sense? Somebody said we can take, we can't take any of this with us. But again, we can send it ahead. Spiritually. Our material possessions will not pass from this life to the next. But the good done for the kingdom of God through the use of our treasures last for eternity. At many funeral scenes and graveside ceremonies, there is a scripture that said, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. They do rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Not only does your reward go ahead, but your work stand as a testimony of what you did in the earth. They follow you. And they come together as a joint witness that you did this and you were good. Whew. Write this down. Good transfers into eternity forever. Good transfers into eternity forever. Here is another precious scripture as it relates to, 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 to rewards that you get. Here is the scripture that talks about rewards, and I'm going to read it from the Amplified. It's 1 Thessalonians 2, 19 through 20. There are crowns given all through Scripture for various acts. And I'm going to read about one of those today. Although the scripture will say wreath, it's a translation of crown. A wreath is a form of a crown. And it says, For who is the object of our hope or joy or our victor's wreath or crown of triumph, triumphant celebration. When we stand in the presence of our Lord Jesus at his coming, is it not you? For you are indeed our glory and our joy. Let me explain. Paul was speaking to the, the church at uh, uh, Thessalonia. He was speaking to the Thessalonians who had gotten saved through his ministry. And so his soul winner's wreath or crown was, when it says triumphant celebration, the New King James or the King James talks about a, a crown of rejoicing. In this, from our scripture, what was he getting a crown uh, 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 of rejoicing for? It was in this line. We get a crown because, is it not you? Let me explain. I get a crown for Emily getting saved under me. Although she's just an example, got saved years ago under somebody. But that pastor got a crown 
and it was a crown of rejoicing. So, so Paul is say, saying to the Thessalonians, is it not you that are the reason why I get a crown from the Lord of rejoicing? It's you. It's you. So you're giving a cup of water. This whole thing started with you giving a cup of water to keep the man of God hydrated, to keep his life going so that they can minister truth. So when he ministers to his people that got saved under, he said, I'll get a crown of rejoicing because of you. Because of you. Because of you. So Paul looked at him and said, don't you know I'm abundantly rejoicing? Do, do you know why? And then he asked a rhetorical question. Is it not you? Is it not because of you? No matter what I've gone through, the fact that you are into the kingdom and you'll be with me one day in eternity forever, is it not you? Keep passing somebody water so they can say, is it not you? Yeah. Six. We give because of what Jesus said. We give because of what Jesus said. And we're not going to read this next passage. I'm just going to cite it for you. Mark 12, 41 through 44. And it's the great story about the widow's might. A small offering. The Lord commended the widow who gave even when she needed what she had. You think it's good to give out of abundance, but oh, child, when you give out a need. When you need it and something else is laying on the table and you say, I'm going to give it. My God. And she did this when others were giving far greater amounts. And thus, her gift was practically meaningless in comparison. So she thought, but Jesus is smart. He sits in the right place in the temple. He sits right next to the offering basket. How nervous would people get if the pastor only sat next to the offering basket in their church? And the reason why this story is so significant is because in the temple where she came to bring her offering to the Lord along with everybody else's muchness, it was an environment of thievery, robbery. Somebody was selling a, a sacrificial animal. Somebody was cheating on the taxes. Somebody was doing something else selling a robe, somebody was selling purple, somebody was selling anointing oil, somebody was sell, selling a blessed rag. In the marketplace called the temple of God. And in that environment where she could have said, I'm not going to give in there because those people are corrupt. She gave what she had to the Lord. People always want to qualify. I don't need to give it in there because I don't, uh, for whatever reason. But she gave as unto the Lord. And she gave it out of her need. So in a, an unpure environment, she would be the rewarder. Oh, my God. 
Jesus, how do we know that? He approved of her giving. He didn't say anything about the people who gave out of their muchness. I got a little excess to give. And now, thousands of years later, preachers are still preaching about the widow's might. Because Jesus celebrated her giving. Because it was all she had. Beloveds, you and I have no excuse for not giving. I can hear it now. I'm sorry, Lord, I need this money to pay off my car. My new boat. I'm going to see the mouse a little later on this year. I'm going to need some money. Disneyland. Mouse. I, I, I got I to got keep it moving because I, you know. I want to say every pastor has known people who quit giving because they didn't agree with the preacher. Let me say this. I don't care if you don't like me. It has nothing what you give to the Lord. Is, is that, that good? Because it's the Lord that's going to reward, not the preacher. When we prioritize our stuff, get our heads straight, then we stop looking at, at, at fail-safes or, 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 or walls or impasses that we put up to, to qualify why we don't give. And, and, and once we do that, then, then a, a, a free passage opens in our heart and in our mind and in our spirit that makes us receptacles of what God is getting ready to unload into us. And many of us need a download right now. On the way to church today, we were listening to the news and, 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 and part of it was how big this, this, this super mega lottery thing is up to, to, to seven. And, and, and for a minute there, I walked out the spirit and started praying something else. <laughs> that if, if a few, so, how many numbers you need? Is it five or six? Whatever. Just, just, just make them appear. But I snap back. But the point is, is that you give to the Lord. He's the one that will repay. So the Lord commended this woman for giving all she had. We don't hear the rest of the story but we never heard about the woman going lacking or being without ever again. I believe that that was the day that her decision met her destiny and brought her prosperity. So your decision is a part of your destiny. And in your destiny could be your prosperity. You decide. You decide. Try God. Decide. See won't I. Decide. Open up a window of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough for you to receive. You decide who's the bigger reward. Give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. He wants to give you money with no air around it. You decide. 
Is what you have enough to meet your need? If not, give it away. You decide. And then keep imagining this widow. Where she is. How she liveth. Because if God's word is right, as long as the earth remain, seed time and harvest. Summer and winter, night and day will never. Blessings to you today. Woo! My God. It'll never cease. If you heard our message today, trust God. Give him the seed of your life so you can harvest eternity. It's available to you today. In the wonderful name of Jesus. give you an opportunity to give your life to the Lord and we make this confession. Say it with us. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of sin and I give you my heart. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior forever. I believe in a miracle. I believe one day you were born of a virgin. You died on a cross and were raised from the dead three days later to the glory of God. And on that confession, I am saved. Thank you, God, for saving me. If you prayed that prayer, find a good Bible-believing, teaching church that explains it to you clearly what the will of God is. That's vibrant in worship. And you see the gifts in demonstration. Get there. Dove Church is a good place to be. We're at 4660 Military in a Ratio in the city of Detroit. And we have a warm heart and warm seat available to you today. Come see us. Come share it. And until next time, remember, we love you with the love of the Lord. Blessings to you. Praise the Lord again. To all of our listeners, we thank God for you. We encourage your financial support of this ministry. Dove Church is good ground. We are here to bless you. And know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website at Dove Church slash giving, which takes you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.